Hello and welcome to the Knitting Traditions podcast. My name is Inga and this is my little corner on the internet where I talk about my knitting. Today I have a regular podcast episode for you guys. I have a bunch of finished objects which are baby knits and I have two new cast-ons for me as well as two cast-ons for her and a little bit of acquisitions at the very end. So I hope you have a wonderful time knitting, crafting, doing whatever you love while you watch this video. I'm drinking a medium to cold coffee in the thermos cup because that is my life now while Matthias is trying to get Nelly down for her second nap of the day outside because ever since uh, we started um, doing naps outside that's the only place she wants to sleep and she sleeps for so long that we have to wake her up sometimes which is not the case indoors so uh, that should give me plenty of time to record this episode hopefully and uh Next episode might be a Q&A episode, um, we'll see. I'm going on a holiday with Nelly and I might see if I can record one of those episodes there because I won't be bringing all of my day knitting with me. So that could be a good thing. So yeah, I digress. Let's get started. I I'm wearing the Amy Slipover, which I had finished last time. Uh, this is the Amy Slipover by Sunnisgarn, and I knit this in cashmere tweed and cashmere silk, uh, two lace weights held together. On the recommended needles, uh, the pattern is from Sunnisgarn. I will link a store down below in it's in the U.S. or Canada. I'm not sure that carries the book in English. Hopefully they still have some. Um, I did a little bit of modifications to this that I've talked about before, but essentially I did just did a few stitches less because my gauge was slightly bigger and uh, the neckline I just knit until I was happy with the length. So, you know, it's a, it's long enough to be folded over as a turtleneck, but I often just pull it on and have it crinkle like this in the front, which I don't know, I like it. And it has the really long tassels on the sides. And it's gotten a lot of wear since I finished it. It's the perfect thing to put on when I have nursing friendly clothing, which sometimes is a very deep V and there's a lot of boobage going on, there's leakage going on, and you just kind of want to cover that area. And voila, love it. So that is what I'm wearing. Um, I have my little cheat sheets with the things that I have finished since last time. So I can do it in sort of a chronological order as to what I cast on. And since last time I have finished the first impressions pan, first impressions pants, which is a free pattern from drops that I found on Ravelry after a colleague of mine knit a pair for Nelly. And this is now her third pair of pants. The first one that I made in brown are starting to get a little bit small. So uh, she still fits into the one for my colleague. And I knit up size 12 to 18 months. And she's a long baby. So I did add a few centimeters extra to the body portion because I found on the smaller size that that's where it she outgrew the fat the fastest because it is quite stretchy this way and the legs are super long. I had one skein of Strike Soul 100% Suporch Merino in the color Hustlove. It's a 400 meters per 100 grams. I did not really know what to do with it because I'm not a fan of Superwash items on me and also variegated yarns aren't usually uh, or tonals that are this much variation to is not what I usually go for in garments. So I figured it would be a good pair of pants for kindergarten. Um, it's not going to be as warm as the non-superwash pants, so I'll probably make 
uh, more. So this one would be more for the warmer months and then the other one for, for the colder months. We'll see. Uh, after I had finished the upper part, I weighed how much yarn I had left, divided it into two, and just knit the legs until I ran out. So I managed to use up the whole whole skin of yarn for these pair of pants. And both the body and the legs are longer than intended, but the genius is you just fold it and there is no elastic needed, no eye cord, no fuzz. It's just simple ribbing uh it's all done on three millimeter needles except for the first part there's like a few centimeters of um 2.5 millimeter needles you don't even have to do that honestly if you make it long enough it's it's not gonna like slide off so yes that is one that i have finished and it took me from the 11th of february until the 1st of april to get this done and then last time I showed you that I was working on a bib, a knitted bib for Nelly, and I have finished it and she has worn it every day since. It is a little bit big, so I am considering felting it just slightly. Um, it's, it's the neck hole that is quite big, so I can just pull it over her head, which is practical. Uh, but... Uh, I'm not sure. It works this way. I could felt it or I could just leave it as is and it will fit for probably her entire toddler life. I opted for little golden um, push buttons, which I bought at Sestra Negrena. They had like a sheet of push buttons, which was wonderful. And I will put uh, the instructions for how to make this below if you would like to make it for a baby or if you want to just keep knitting on the garter you could make an adult version for yourself because this is essentially a triangle shawl uh, and I just stopped at the width that was identical to one of her bibs and then I did a knitted bind off in lace and the instructions for that I'll put below. And it would be kind of cute to make one for myself. Not the bib size, of course, but um, like a bigger version could be cute. This yarn, it was leftovers of the number three New Zealand lamb's wool from Gül in their undyed uh, color. I used 2.5 millimeter needles for this project. And I started it the 12th of February, and I think I finished it the last week of March. Um, it was just one of those knits that I would knit on when she was sleeping and her naps weren't that long. So, not, it, it, it's, I, I took my time to make this, um, but I think I will make more because it is really nice and warm. It doesn't get cold when she has like spit ups and stuff. So that is wonderful. If I make it again, I will probably make a smaller one uh, when it comes to the neckline. But with this construction, that would also mean that it's not as deep unless I were to do some German short rows. So I'm playing with the ideas. We'll, we shall see. After I finished that one, I think I have not shown you. I think I finished another square on the Stella quilt blanket, so I'm I'm going to run out and get that one. Okay, I'm back. Nelly was asleep. I had finished this square. This is the first square for the blanket that I've made, which is quite big. I'm using Rauma La Mulheld Double. And this was a uh, Vida Lana from Knit Crate, which is sadly no longer in business. So that was my first one. And then the second one I have also finished, again using the Rauma La Mul, which is gonna be the base for all my squares. And this DK yarn is Lore from the fiber company and I did not write down 
the label for this one. It is somewhere, but not here. <laughs> I have said it in a previous episode, so if you are very curious, you can always go back and see. But it is this beautiful green. I feel like it's called Ambitious, but I can't remember. So those are the two first squares, and I have started a third one, which I will show you later because it's in the bottom of the pile. And that one uses Wishbone, which is um, a DK yarn that I bought through Etsy a few years ago. And then I didn't know what to do with it because I bought it for a different project, which was fingering weight. And I hadn't really understood the terminology of fingering DK at that point in time. Yes, so that is the Stella Quilt Blanket by Laura Penrose. I'm using four millimeter needles and different 100 gram DK skeins in my stash. I am also considering maybe doing 100 grams of fingering and then just holding it double. Um, but but for now, I have enough DK single skeins to to work with. So that is what I am doing, and we'll see how big it ends up being in the end. Then. I finished, I cast on and finished a summer top for Nelly since last time. Uh, me and my friend were at the cabin and we went to the local yarn store and they had Issei or Pure Silk. And I've never tried it, but I've heard a lot of talk about this yarn. I must say, I'm not sure I understand the hype. It's a summer yarn. It feels very dry and crunchy. Um, it does knit up quite evenly um, I would say but it feels like cotton and this thing bled so much and I I should have used some vinegar or something but I was lazy and I didn't um, I left it to soak and the water was so pink and then I decided to just go in the sink and just rinse it and rinse it and rinse it and rinse it and it just would not stop bleeding it's still bleeding i just gave up uh, but this pattern is the poly top uh, it's a pattern by knitting for olive they also have the poly dress um, i went for the top and i used the color fuchsia this is the six to nine month old size it's knit on three millimeter needles and the gauge is 28 stitches I started it the 18th of March and finished it the 21st of March. So it took me three days, four days to do this. Um, it's a child size knit. I didn't used to be a fan of knitting for children until I got my own child. And now I get to see her wearing them. So it's more fun to knit for her as well. And it's feeding my need for color and uh, wanting to knit summer garments. I personally tend to wear my wools, so my summer garments really don't get a lot of wear. So instead, I will make for her. And what can I say? I elongated the body just slightly, so right now it fits like a dress on her. She is almost... What is she now? She'll, she'll be three months soon. And this was the size six to nine months, and it fits like a dress. An oversized dress and it's nice to have something that she can wear the whole warm season and into the fall hopefully maybe so this was a top not the dress but it fits like a dress at this moment in time and I wanted to knit up some summer garments for her because we are going to Turkey which is a lot warmer than here so wanted to have something that she can wear that is not only wool. I still brought wool. Wool regulates. Then after the poly top, I cast on the Pokhara. No, I think I had cast on the Pokhara first, definitely. Yeah, that was like around the first of March or something because I showed you that last time. I just didn't have my book with me, so. 
I hadn't written it into the book, but it's finished. This beautiful garment is the Pokhara by Linka Newman. Uh, I knit this up in Hillesburg Asken Sul for the color work. Uh, the white, let me just check the camera. The lighting is so bad, I'm sorry, <laughs> can't fix it. Uh, the white is a baby alpaca merino blend that I bought in Turkey. And it is so soft. Because it is so soft, I decided to knit the size two-year-old instead of one-year-old. Just in case she becomes fuzzy with time, uh, I don't think she would find this scratchy. So this is also for my daughter. I used about 160 grams of the base color. So 200 gram skeins would be enough for the two-year-old size. And for the color work, it, it just used a tiny bit of yarn. So you could use something from your, from your, from your stash, really. Uh, the color work was a bit tedious because a lot of the time you have three colors going whenever you have like yellow, brown and white or orange, brown and white. You need to knit with three strands at a time. And at this section, there's actually four colors, but the fourth color, the orange, is done with duplicate stitching after you finish the garment and have washed and blocked it. So that was also a little bit tedious, but fine. It is very cute. Uh, Lincoln Newman has an adult version of this pattern in a thicker yarn weight, but because of the three-stranded color work and the duplicate stitching, I'm not sure I would go through it for myself. If I were to do it again, I think I would go with the same colors because I think it is very pretty um, and just a beautiful, beautiful yoke both for children and adults. So this is from her book, which has knits for children. I have not checked if her adult pattern is in a book or as a um, singular pattern. I do think she sells mostly patterns in books though, if not only. But yes, beautiful Pokhara sweater. And then, <laughs> I cast on another thing for Nelly. I cast on the Sea Glass Mini. I don't know what's the front and back. I think this is the front. It doesn't really matter because it does not have any short rows or anything. But this is the Sea Glass Mini by Wool and Pine. This is a pattern for children, which essentially is perfect for using scraps. You use the magic knot method, so you don't have to weave in all those ends. Uh, it also recommends to use like a little bit of fabric glue and to use very little so it doesn't get like stiff. Um, I try to use very little, but still those knots are very easy to feel on the inside of the garment. Um, so I did try to... <laughs> weave in those few ends that I have to like tack those little magic knot ends down a little bit um but uh, she'll wear a body underneath this and it'll be fine I did not use <laughs> scrap yarn I bought yarn for this project just because I really like these cute little pastel colors this is the Bambino by Viking Yarn, which is one of my favorite um, summer yarn blends. It's 50% bamboo and 50% cotton. And I felt that composition from other yarn brands and it's just as lovely. So I just think there is something about the 50 bamboo, 50 cotton that really feels nice. Um, now it's been washed and blocked. It feels a little bit drier to the touch, but I think as she wears it, it will get that silky, soft, buttery feeling again. But it is really lovely to knit with. It's 176 meters to 50 grams, so it's slightly thicker than a regular like fingering weight. Um, I knit the 6 to 12 month size, but I'm intending for her to wear it now as like a 
oversized tunic thing and it's just so pretty how the colors play together and as I was knitting this like this small of a size I was thinking that a self-striping sock yarn together with like a plain white would work really well because you would get a similar effect but you wouldn't have ends to weave in or ends to do magic knot with or you know whatever you choose so if I do it again I will probably use some self-striping yarn to make another one of these these colors if you can get your hands on them are 402 451 421 432 443 and 464 and I used 3 and 3.5 millimeter needles for this and it took me a week to make so that's going with us on holidays yes I think that was all of my finished objects and we can move into whips i'll start with the next thing i cast on for her and then i will move into more me knits so i cast on the blonde body by knitting for olive because again i bought some pure silk uh it took less than two balls for the pink one and this pattern is also going to use less than two balls i'm knitting the six month old size and I have finished the bottom of the romper part of this pattern. This is the pure silk in the color Eucalyptus. And I'm using 2.5 and 3 millimeter needles. Again, the gauge is 28 stitches, as is a lot of the Knitting for Olive patterns for children, either using their cotton merino or their pure silk, which is interchangeable in gauge. So I finished the body parts that took me like two days. That was super quick because once you got here, it was just knitting in the round. And then I cast on the lace and that's where things have kind of stopped a little bit because it, it takes more brain space to knit it. Uh, I have divided all the sections of the lace by stitch markers. So that makes it easier for my nursing brain to kind of divide them into sections and easier to memorize the pattern and know where I am at. So currently working on the lace, which is going to be beautiful. Um, and once I have finished the lace skirt, which goes on top of the romper, so you can see I still have quite a bit to go. Um, then the top portion will be knit and there'll probably be some borders so a bit more finicky of a pattern but it will be very cute on her and Matthias's mom is making a bigger size I think around one year old size in a brown wool which is going to be so nice for the winter and then this will be for the summer so I do need to get going on this so this is a project I will pack with me to go um, so I think I will just toss that in my suitcase now already because it's right next to me. So we don't forget it. Okay. So that was the blonde body. And then I cast on a sweater for me, which is not going with me because it's just too much yarn to pack. But I am knitting a sweater from a designer that was new to me. Uh, I was helping my friend pick out yarn for uh, a pattern from Eggio Knits, which is called the Oba sweater, which is beautiful. Uh, but I had saved another sweater in my Instagram where you can save posts uh, that was very similar looking, but it's a different design by Nurgard Knitters. And it's the My Herringbone Jumper. And this one has more bold patterning, I would say. And it's not 
it likes sectioned color work. It's kind of a pattern that uses the whole body and the whole sleeve for its repeat. And um, I had a little bit of a look at both patterns. And this one uses 4 need four millimeter and 5.5 millimeter needles. I think the Oba uses 3 and 6 millimeter needles. Um, the Oba uses Jensen and silk mohair, while this one uses the Isayer um, Alpaca 2 and a silk mohair. In retrospect, it would have been a lot more affordable to pick a DK weight yarn with a silk mohair than to hold this double. It would also have been less fuzzy because holding this double with a silk mohair and this double with a silk mohair in color work all over knitting means six strands of yarn at all times. Yes, so that is one thing fuzziness and price point as well uh, but i saw this color and i fell in love with it and sadly the lighting is not the best i will turn off my ring light maybe that is better but yeah now you can see well it's still not showing up as well as it could it has a lot of variation to the color uh, this is the color Thyme, which I really like. I like my greens. And I'm holding it with the color E0. I have the Tilia Silk Mohair instead of the Isayer because I couldn't find in that local yarn store a white Isayer yarn that fit this well. I also couldn't find a Isayer silk mohair in a green that I would like for this because I wanted this color to shine through and um, the the other greens from, from Isayer would have overpowered it a little bit. So I did get this one from, from um, Pilkalana, but when I came home I decided to not use this because I swatched and let's see if i have my swatch here yeah now this is very very subtle <laughs> extremely subtle but yeah this is the tilia and here i had a different silk mohair which is slightly lighter and cooler and more similar to this so i decided to use that silk mohair and then the the the, the silk mohair from Filkolana, this the tilia I will use for a different project in the future because I have other green yarns in my stash that I could do with a silk mohair. So I am using this cone of silk mohair that is in my stash that I bought on a website which it doesn't have a label. I'll see if I can remember it and put it down below. Uh, it's somewhere in Eastern Europe. And this is 30% silk, 70% mohair. And I have cast on. I struggled uh, quite a bit on deciding what to do because the photo on Instagram that I had saved looked really flattering on the person. But then when I bought the pattern and I looked, I felt like it the sweater fit differently in those photos and I wasn't as big. Of a fan. Um, I don't know what it is. I think it might it might have something to do with the neckline but also how it fit on like the bottom portion because in the photo that I liked you didn't see the bottom of the sleeves and the body. So I might do my own modifications to the sleeves and body when I get to the point but I also needed to figure out what to do with with the neckline to get started. And in the pattern, um, several of the sizes have the same amount of stitches for the neckline and the Alba sweater has the same amount of stitches for the neckline. And I think I like the Alba neckline better, but not really, but 
yeah I couldn't decide <laughs> so I decided to go down a needle size just slightly so I used 3.75 and then I ignored the instructions of doing increases in the neckline except for in the back when I was doing the German short rows because I felt like that needed a little bit more fabric um but I didn't want it to go as wide and deep in the back as it does in the photos. So I thought that if I went down in a needle size and I did less decreases, and I also did them further down, just in the German short rows here, I felt like that might help. And we'll see. I am going to knit until the yoke is finished and then I will try it on. But it's not coming with me, so this is gonna go on the back burner for a little bit but the color work is beautiful and I really do like how how these colors play together now it's going to be a thicker sweater and a warm sweater um, and I just really hope I don't find it itchy I have knit a few sweaters with alpaca before and I have found them itchy so w we'll see I hope I hope I don't find it itchy. Um, then I would have to wear something underneath or or gift it. But that would be a shame because the color is beautiful. It is what caught my eye and got me to invest in this yarn. Um, and then those thoughts about itchiness and fit came secondhand after it had already been purchased, which happens sometimes. But hopefully it will work out wonderfully. We will see and it could honestly be worn inside out as well i find the floats quite mesmerizing and it's very repetitive because the the color work is always moving so your floats are always moving so you don't have to think about where to catch your float to not catch them in the same position because that sometimes shows through the fabric so as the color work is moving the placement of the floats catching catching the floats is also moving um, and I think it, it would be cool to wear it both ways. <laughs> Though I have like a few places where I've cached it slightly differently and that messes it up just a tiny bit. So yeah, now I have six strands of yarn going and one of them is attached to a cone. So it's not the most portable knit, but yeah, it is, it is a beautiful, beautiful looking color work. Um, but I am doing a different neckline, probably doing different sleeves. I will be doing a different raglan because I don't want it as deep and I'll also probably do a different body. So essentially I'm using the yarn gauge and color work, but my own sweater, <laughs> which is nice. It's, it's the freedom of knitters to do modifications and I say go for it. Worst thing is it doesn't work out and you can always rip back, though maybe not do that with six strands of yarn, including silk mohair, because that will be a pain to rip out. So I will try it on as I go to make modifications that I don't have to rip out. Yeah. So that was my herringbone jumper for me. And then I cast on the In and Out Raglan sweater recipe by The Republic of Me. So Ivana sent me some beautiful hand spun yarn that she has spun up. And she sent nine of these. They are different sizes, but nine hanks of her beautiful hand spun in this undyed, I think it was Shetland uh, wool. And I decided to try her sweater recipe because I love how her sweaters look on her and on her blog she has written up how to do it and I have to say it is genius. Now her sweater recipe is essentially how I often calculate how to knit my own sweaters in my head but she has somehow managed to get that logic down on paper in a way that is easily readable and understandable i think and she's even made a graph like a chart with like numbers that makes it really easy to based on your measurements and your gauge swatch know how many stitches to cast on the in part 
and how many stitches you're going to have after the raglan, the out part, when you divide for sleeves and body. And it's amazing. And I am talking, I'm going to show you. I opted for sort of like a mock turtleneck, uh, which is like a turtleneck that's not folded over. It just stands up. And I did a gauge swatch loosely. <laughs> She, um, she recommends to do it properly. I am a little bit lazy and I'm wanting an oversized sweater. So if there's like one stitch plus minus off in my gauge swatch, that's fine. I think I measured that I would have 50 centimeters for my neck because I didn't want it like a super tight. And for my bust plus positive ease, I think I'm going for 120 or 125 centimeters. And I'm using her hand spun. And the needles that I'm using now is five millimeter needles because she recommends to have a little bit of a looser fabric to have more drape. So that's what I went for. Um, yeah, so based on my gauge swatch, I applied those numbers, she explains in her recipe, to the chart. Uh, how, so I cast on 84 stitches and I'm going to continue doing the raglan increases like she explains some, which is a four um, row repeat where row one you increase on both the body and sleeve section, second row just knit, third row you just do increases on the front and back, fourth row knit. So I'm going to continue to do that until I have, I need to refer to her recipe, but it was at least 200 stitches, probably a little bit more because my arm circumference is wider than my size would say. So I will probably do three um, rows where I do increases on, on both the front and arms where in the pattern I would have just done the front and back if that makes sense to kind of compensate for that so that my sleeves are wide enough when the body is wide enough and yeah genius so you could essentially take any yarn that you have knit a swatch and then use her recipe to make a top-down raglan and I really like the the shape of hers on her so hopefully it would look just as good on me in her beautiful hand spun so this is also a sweater project that will not come with me on my holidays just because it's a lot of yarn to pack um so this is going to be staying here and waiting for me until i come home And then I have two more whips that will be coming with me. So one of them is this sock tube that I've been knitting on when walking with Nelly. And it's a self-striping yarn, hence why I got the idea of doing the sea glass mini with a self-striping yarn, because I measured that the length of the color in these changes were enough to do probably two rounds um, of color in the sea glass mini for her size. So yes, but first I'm going to knit a tube, which will be long enough for a pair of socks. I haven't decided if I'm going to knit a very long tube and have the cuff on each side, or if I'm just going to knit down, do the toe and then do another one. I haven't quite decided. But I am bringing this with me, probably on the plane. This is my twister from the Twister Sisters, which is just genius for knitting on the go around my cuff or hanging it up. And I don't think this is going to be a problem going through security. The metal needles might be. Usually I only bring wooden needles when flying 
just in case because even though the airline company says that you can bring needing needles you never know who is going to be in security that day and what mood they are in so i usually bring wooden interchangeable needles that i will take off and put in my purse together with a few pencils and pens that way it doesn't show up going through the security but i figured that if they were to take this one pair then so be it it's a sock tube i can pick up the stitches um, when i get down there and probably I'm not going to get that much knitting or any knitting done, seeing as I am flying with a baby on my lap. Um, she would have to fall asleep in a position that would allow knitting. But easier to knit from this, maybe, than having to get like a project bag out with a bigger project. I'll bring it just in case. I'm not flying alone, so um, I can knit if somebody, someone else holds her. Hopefully. We'll see. And um, having forgotten about that sock tube, I did a cast on yesterday, which I thought if I managed to finish the lace and the finicky part, before I leave, then the dress is just knit in the round and I can bring that on the plane. And the pattern that I cast on is the lace bat dress from Knitting for Olive. And I am using some yarn that I bought in Turkey. Uh, this is the Gazal Wool and Silk Hand Painted, which is 20% silk and 80% merino. This is the color Antique Moss, which I fell in love with. And it's going to be a beautiful color on Nelly. So I'm holding this yarn double on 3.5 millimeter needles. And that gave me 28 stitches on my gate swatch. So originally this pattern is knit on 3 millimeter needles with one strand of the cotton merino or merino. You could at least use the pure silk, which is like a light fingering. But this is more lace weight, so holding a double on a bigger needle gave me the right gauge, so that's what I'm doing. And I have these cute little stoppers on, which I also like to put on my needles um, when flying. I feel like that also helps a little bit. I have started the sleeve. I am doing the one-year-old size, which is the smallest size in this pattern, I believe. But I'm hoping that she can wear it um, late summer, fall as well. Uh, the pattern knits up the lace on the sleeves and then there are decreases because this looks like a sleeve that would fit me. <laughs> uh, the lace decreases, then I think you, you do provisional cast on and you knit the top part and then later you pick up stitches and do the skirt. So if I get to that part, then this will come with me on the plane. And yeah, so this one I started yesterday. I just got a few rows in. Lace is not my favorite way of knitting. I prefer color work to lace, um, but, it, but it's fine. It's going to be pretty. And I'll see once I finish the dress how much yarn I have left. Uh, if, if I'll knit something else with it. This is the swatch. Um, so it, it makes quite a beautiful fabric. It's slightly variegated, um, but the color is just stunning. So yes, that's, that's my last whip, you guys, except, except the third square of the Stella Quilt Blanket, which has gotten almost... Six, six squares is what we have here. So this is the Wishbone DK that I have used for this. And I do think this is a superwash. It feels like a superwash. Um, but I no longer have the label. That disappeared somewhere. Whoops. But yeah, this is my DK skein. Which I am knitting up into this. 
and it's quite a comforting knit but the yarn again takes a lot of space and I need to fit baby things in my suitcase as well so I think this will stay at home and wait for me until I'm back home although it would be really nice to have with me because it is such a nice mindless knit I haven't quite made up my mind I haven't quite made up my mind we'll see we'll see but yes that was all of the knitting that I have done since last time I have a little bit of acquisitions for you guys so I ordered two colorways from the Honorok Air Newton. Um I just really like collecting their yarns I love I love what I've knit with them as well but they're also so precious so I need to find the right projects now I ordered 500 grams of each of these colors so I made the Gernsegenser from Sun is Gone before but I needed more than 500 grams for that so I know I'm not gonna have enough yarn to do that one but I could make something less oversized what well, my idea for these colors were to make something for Nelly and maybe some accessories for me like a mommy and me match but I haven't opened them so I'm gonna open them with you guys the first color that I got is the Apustroph and Crinkles oh this is beautiful it's a pink yarn with some warm undertones um old pink now i'm not a very pink person so the idea of this was to make something for nelly if she gets into a pink era i will have some pink yarn that i can knit with her that i will also enjoy enjoy knitting with now unspun yarn is not everyone's cup of tea the first time i knit with unspun i hated it it was breaking all the time it didn't work for me but then i got a little bit more used to it and i found that holding it double and holding it with silk mohair really helped so if anything try that if you're struggling so i have 500 grams of this and i got another one thinking that I could knit with them on their own, but also maybe do some color work. This is the other one. This is Stika. Oh, this is beautiful. Beautiful. This is a pale yellow. Online, it looked a little bit like pale banana, but I would say it's more like a pale... Mm, is it tangerine? It's called in English, mandarin. The small oranges, the pale, a pale small orange. It's definitely warmer than a pale banana color. And this also looks warmer to me in real life. But I was thinking that these two together would make for some cute color work for her. Or just on their own, like a little Gansy, oh, a little tulip sweater. That would be really nice. And I think they are very soft feeling. They're a whole nother league than the Plotulupi, which is a lot more scratchy. So yes. I have 500 grams of each. It should be enough for an adult sized sweater, as long as it's not as oversized as the Guernsey, um, or more than one sweater for Nelly. I think I made the baby tulip using less than 100 grams. So, yeah. I really want to make oh, a Guernsey sweater for baby in this, or maybe one of the petite knits patterns i will have to go on ravelry and do a little bit of 
do a little bit of searching. Um, but again, I do not think I will bring this with me. I think this will stay here until I get back home for a cast on at a later time. Yes. Space management wise in my suitcase, I will be bringing thin yarn weights and ideally knit something that she will wear when we are down there. Yeah. I think, hopefully I have not forgotten anything. Um, I hope to record again, do a little Q&A, and then another episode when I get back home. And I hope that you are well, and that you're making all the things that make you happy, and I will see you soon. Bye.